So delighted to be joined by Barry Cullinan and Jonathan Higgins uh, to look back on the action in the Galway Club Championships over the weekend. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, something different uh, this week on the show. We're going to power rank uh, the senior clubs uh, and go through the uh, games in the weekend. In terms of the safety there, but... Sorry, you let off a bomb there, are you? <laughs> it's all right. Sorry, man. <laughs> but we are going to uh, power on the senior clubs. Uh, as we said, um, there are all of different opinions on who's ranked where, but um, it would create a bit of controversy. Um, will we get straight into the rankings and we can discuss then I suppose the games the team played over the weekend. Jonathan, I'll come to you first. Um I suppose who have you put here at eighteen? You put me on the spot now. We'll start at the top and work our way down, will we? Oh yeah, we can go for the top. Uh, well no, like if, if you're looking if you want to look at look at look at, as an overview, you're looking straight away at the teams that haven't got any points uh, to date and teams that will probably be realistically known that they are already looking into a relegation battle and I think some of the teams will you know anyone that's like if you look at take a group uh, group C for instance I think one of A know already they're in a good bit of bother there yes there is a scatter of teams in front of them uh, that are only on two points uh, but they are already uphill battle I think you look at yeah, group A then as well um, three teams with their points and I think three teams that are probably going to struggle to, to hang on on Spidale that Luke Gerard maybe to a lesser extent because they've had uh, the two of the more difficult games so far. But the likes of Unspidil and Nivana Latimer, they're in bother so far. Um, surprisingly, then in Group 2, uh, Anadown probably, again, faced two difficult enough teams, but they probably would have anticipated that they would have got a, a couple of points on the mark straight away. Comer's still in great form. You saw the uh, his individualist goal just doing the rounds there from TJ Carr. I actually didn't realise they were in, I had the cameras in, and I was going around to everybody raving about this great goal. But uh, thankfully, there's some video evidence to, to back it up there as well. But like two games, no points. They're in a bit of bother. And, uh, and Carro are the same way. Two games, uh, no points. So like the raise of teams there, they're already like really struggling. Coming into it, I think we spoke previously at the top. I was kind of, uh, you know, going between the two, between Cara Finn and Mount Belly and Marlott. Uh, I think I'd edge slightly towards Curfin just after the league campaign and maybe the couple of unknowns in terms of uh, Montpellier Mala, how would they react of, of being, you know, going into the season again, this time being the one chased rather than being the chasers and indifferent enough league campaign. And look, there was various uh, realistic uh, reasons uh, to justify that, but they've started on form. And, you know, I know technically you, you look at the, the the scores got and the scoring difference, Curfin are the standout team. But for me, the team that I've been most impressed about to date would be Montpellier Milan. It's just because of the, uh, I suppose, the array of attacking players that they have. That that full fo that forward line in particular, Barry McHugh has come back in red hot form. Uh, Finnerty's in good form still uh, from his Galway days. Patrick Kelly has still shown that he's an eye for goal. I think it's three 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 goals in, in two games. John Daly is just a you know, there's nothing to be said there. He's just a, a fantastic player. And again, red hot form. Matthew Barrett is tipping in with scores in midfield. The Donlins in the half forward line look shrewd. James Foley is getting points as well. They just look like they have a lot more sharp shooters. Probably been a little bit more tested. I'm thinking back primarily to that Anna Down game. Uh, Cara Finn, I've only saw them really once against Luke Gerard, and that was a bit of just a bit of a chess match. Um, but if you're if you're asking me to start at the top, I'll probably just about you know, this is a conversation that you're probably kind of weave back and forth multiple times. But at the moment, I would slightly, slightly edge to Montpellier Milo just being the top of the tree at the moment, but just about. Yeah, I've gone to along with Montpellier Milo as well as uh, number one, uh, I suppose, three and kind of champions unbeaten as well. It's, it's hard to look otherwise. Barry, do you still think Montpellier are number one? Uh, yeah, I uh, hope you can hear me all right there, lads. Um, yeah, I would put them at number one um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, you know, they put up big scores, they look impressive. Uh, their big players are playing well, and Jonathan covered all that off with like Patrick Kelly, Owen Finnerty, Barry McHugh. I also think the fact that they're doing this um, 
without Michael Daly is a big is a big bonus to them. Um, I think Michael is due back on pitch next week. Probably won't see much action in the group stages, but they will be hoping that that he will be a big fillet to them coming into the knockout stages. Um, very hard to separate. You know, uh, Jonathan will see an awful lot more games than I will. You know, just just reading reports. You know, some of the highlights watching some of the stream games. Team that I'll throw in the mix to go, I wouldn't say one, but certainly push everyone else. Based, based on the form, uh, the form of the team that they bet in the first round, having a huge win in the second round, I think Sawtill have to go into the mix. Um, you know, dispatched Barna relatively easily. We saw what Barna then did to St. James's. Um, you know, Montpellier Malak impressive again went for in a win over Anna Down. So till then came and and dismantled Anna Down relatively easy. I think it was one ten to five points at half time. Rob Finnerty probably, you know, friends Jamie Comer, Patrick Kelly, Rob John Daly, Rob Finnerty probably the standout player in the county at the moment in terms of how he's playing. So I would group um like I would put Montpellier first, but like in terms of you know, Mike Cullen, Tune, uh, Carl Finn and Sawtill, I, I I think you're probably trying to just group group them as a blanket and, and that, that kind of comes after the first five, I, I would say. Yeah, it's an interesting point, Barry, on, on Salt Hill. I, I wasn't overly impressed with them against Barron the first day out. I thought that was a, I thought a nine, nine point uh, victory. I thought flattered maybe Salt Hill a little bit. Barron had a couple of goals scoring opportunities. I think they would work twice the first day against them. Now, to be fair, Salt Hill did the damage. But they looked, uh, if, if there was a team that improved the most from round one to round two, it definitely was Salt Hill. They were very, very impressive uh, against Anna Down. They won that at a canter, really. Um, and Finnerty being brought out to the middle of the field, pulling the strings, you'll always get your glorious points. But he just looked like he has a like. Uh, and speaking to John Amani afterwards as well, he he kind of was kind of saying, "Look, this is where we kind of need to bring him out and almost be a." I suppose maybe it's a little bit like how PJ went a little bit deeper and was turned into a bit of a, a playmaker. There's a, maybe a, a slight element to that to it. But Salt Hill did look very impressive. Um, but that's a huge game coming up for them next against Bombay de Mala. You'll have a, a lot better uh, understanding about how, how well or, or advanced they are when they when they get through that game and after that game. But that's it, certainly. And um, there's some big games coming up in the next round. Uh, we let the hurlers have their have their grace this this weekend, but like you look at my Colin, uh, Curfin, Salt Hill, Montpellier, Mar La, Anna Down, James is that's a battle for for other reasons as well. Even Uthard against Tume, they're probably lo- looking at that that they need to try and get some and uh, get some leeway there as well. But you know, there's some big big games coming there. But that is a, it's a it's an interesting one, and how Salt Hill could come out of that, and if they were even like they probably don't. Ex- Expected to beat Mumbelli, my lot. But if they hang in there and give a good show of themselves and and don't get annihilated, you'll certainly be fancying them to get out of the group and uh, be a difficult team to beat after that. Just the one, the one thing on Rob Finnerty, um, maybe if we bring, bring it back to a you know the All Ireland final where Shane Walsh went to the full forward line, probably for the first time that we've seen him, seen him all year. Uh, it's very difficult for two people in a full forward line to actually have a huge influence on a game. Um, and the fact that they've Tom O'Callaghan, who is an out out full forward, ball winner, scoring full forward, it, it, they probably felt. Look, I'm, I'm, who am I to tell John O'Mahony how he feels? But I would imagine John O'Mahony kind of felt, look, we're covered in that area. We might get the most out of the two of them. I, I would have said, and I was chatting to a few people before the start of the championship, that Rob Finnerty would go to eleven for Sawtill. I didn't expect to see him go go as far back as he does. Or he has been doing, but like <clears throat> I was lucky enough to, to coach Rob at at um at under twenty one level, he's all the skills, like his kick passing is excellent. He's always looking for a scoring opportunity for for his teammates, he's unselfish, um, and he's putting up big scores as well for Sot Hill. So look, he's he's really he's really he's really pulling the strings for them. And and as Jonathan mentioned, mentioned Paul, like <clears throat> It's difficult. It's difficult to rank teams right now when none of the big teams realistically have played each other. So we haven't had a, you know, a, a Sawtill Montpellier Mylock game as of yet. 
So until until those teams go toe to toe, and we see what form comes from that, it is it is very very difficult to actually see who is in pole position for um you know for a right good crack at uh, uh, Frank Fox. Would you still say though, Barry, that Kervin are probably at second? Yeah, just given historically what they what they've done, and you have to remember, like, yeah, I I would say I said this, it's, it's not, um, it's it's not the Curfin of old. We know that you know Curfin of old, um, probably their goal at the start of the year was 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 certainly to win a Connacht Championship and have a right good crack at All Ireland. Possibly that might mightn't be their goal this year, and I think they will be focusing first and foremost on a, on a county championship. But they still have, like at the back. Now I know Liam Silk is away, but at the back, like they still have Bernie Power, um, Tony Gill, Dylan McHugh, Kieran Malloy. You know they still have a lot of really really good footballers up top. Dylan Canny showing a bit of form. Gary Sice, you know, still doing it for them, putting up big big scores. So, you know, Kevin Johnson has come in there. Great, great experience from Ballon Tubber, a new fresh voice for them. So yeah, I I would put them as second. Um, I'll put them in there as second, kind of on historically what I know about the players that they have and that they will perform. Um, but I'm just not sure. Uh, I'm just not sure exactly where they are yet in in the fact that that they probably haven't been they haven't been hugely tested as a. Um, Uterard was their first game, wasn't it? And yeah. their second game was last it was weekend just, was uh, just a shootout over uh, Lettermore. So Lettermore. So yeah. So you, you, where they are exactly, you know, like no offense to Uterard or Lettermore, they're not probably not going to get the business end of the championship. So until Curfin meets someone that was at the business end, will be at the business end of the championship. Uh, we'll know more where they are there and then. Their opponents, Jonathan, Mike Cullen, next up, like they've had a lot of lads away, but they're gradually getting everyone back now. And so the first proper year, we could say they were seeing that with a full strength team and Peter Puck. And um, I suppose the game against Duke there at 7 7, and they did really take control of the game. But they're probably next up from Curvin, where you're looking at. Yeah, no, they would they would be next in line. I think we started off with that trio of being the most realistically to, to have tangible aspirations of winning Frank Fox out. I think it will be difficult for anyone outside those three, but I, I would that's the 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 order that I would be going in. Um you'd have to say that my Cullen uh, probably got their scare out of the way the first day out against Unspiddle. Um seemed to be a lot better. Um that's a difficult sort of a game set up. Uh, particularly the way Alan Murphy has the Uchtarard side set up, they are very counter-attacking, but they're bloody good at it as well, and they're they're a tough enough to crack. And it, it can take teams uh, quite a while to curve in, quite a while. It seem to take my Colin quite a while as well, but eventually they do. The bigger, better teams do find a way to crack the nut and and uh, work their way through and get up the scores. They seem to pull away relatively handy enough in the end. But in a weird way, I think for both sides here, Curfin and my Cullen, I think it is a no harm that this this game comes in and that they have, you know, there's no kind of rest on all the laurels. It's kind of pretty much all in here. Uh, it's a good asset test for them to see where they really are at. Uh, we're basing, a, as Barry's touched on there, we're basing a lot of this, uh, I suppose, perception of where the teams are at best on, you know, previous uh, and experience in the bank and, and what they've achieved previously in the last couple of years um, but it, look, it's, it's a huge game to look forward to it's uh, it's going to be a big one uh, just to, as I said to see where they're at but you know going into it right now you'd probably say that Curve should about just edge it but my Cullen are getting their big players back um, starting to get scores from all around it seems like Galler had a great game uh, for, for them as well uh, you know such a so many so many Galway players straight away in good form as well. So you, you know, it should be. It's there. It's. I was about to say it should be tied around, but I, I'm just fascinated to see how Salt Hill and my Colin are a you get on together, um, to get the goals. But it's it's certainly one to look forward to. But you'd have to just just about maybe expect that Curvin will just edge it. But it's certainly a game to look forward to. 
Can I can I retract? <laughs> I'll um I'll I'll change my mind. It's my prerogative. Um, <laughs> I will put my call in. I'll put my call in number two. I think they have they have so many options. Um, you know, you go you go defensive against Mike Cullen and, and park the bus. Peter Cook and Owen Gallagher, Paul Kelly will will kick from distance. Um, you put a full core press on. Sean Kelly will break the line. Um, and you will leave Desi Keneally up top, and he'll do damage. I think they've they've players all over the park that can do, you know, can do untold untold damage for them. Um. You know, if you look at their team on paper, it's 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 an it's an exceptional team, um, and they have some lads there. I think they probably have kind of have points to prove. So, uh, yeah, I'll I'll retract. I'll go my Cullen two and Curfin three. You going you going to change your mind mind in twenty minutes again, Barry? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait till we get further down the line. <laughs> I'll have to try and get Claire Galway up there. Yeah, so we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll leave that one. <laughs> Jonathan, does that make you change your mind? Are you still? No, I would. St- I would still uh, edge a little bit just towards Curfin because I. Do, I just think that they have a, a, a little bit of, um, I suppose, motivation. It is relatively a, a drought for, by Curfin terms, beaten by Montpellier by a lot twice in the last two years. One in the final. Disappointed how the second half went. Um, disappointed in the way the nature of that finishing goal in the final last year. They really, really were on the bloody attack down the right wing and they got broken broke, broken open and uh, finishing smashed it open. But there was two or three players open on that move as well. It was a very un like like uh, second half performance. Uh, and then obviously the year, the year before as well. But I just think with, with Johnson there, I think, I think he, he, it's hard to describe him, but he has this edge of kind of pushing himself forward and he seems to be really really and rightfully using this as a builder for himself and I just can't help but, but be very impressed with him uh, I like the way they hold on to the ball uh, I like the way they switch the point of attack a lot I, I just admire how comfortable and how patient they are they're going to be they're going to be needed to be like that they had to be against Duke Dredd in particular like for that game in the second half I'd say Steed I'd love to see his possession counts in the second half because like he must have touched that ball for 20 minutes out of the half an hour it was just incredible um but i just think that they have a bit of an edge i, I can i can i can certainly wouldn't be right off my call or anything like that and i think between the first three it is you know toss of a time period but i'll still edge towards curve in just slightly slightly by a nose uh, in second place are we all along the lines that maybe it is so I'll tell Ford very talked about maybe their team to make the breakthrough. Yeah, I think uh yeah, I th- I'm I'm impressed with Sawtill. I think they're they're as I said, I'm not going to go over over the points they made previously. I think they're going really, really well. And I suppose if you're looking at four and five, you're probably looking at Sawtill and Tune. I think Tune have been really impressive. Um they've really good scoring forwards and they've good leadership at the back with Gary O'Donnell and Noel Henry. Um and you can't talk about Tune like if we leave the rest of them behind. You can't talk about Tune without talking about Jamie Murphy. Um, like I, I, he's the same age as me. <clears throat> um, so he's young then, Barry. Well, well, he's very young. Yeah. Uh, what I remember, what I remember from Jamie, you know, when we we're minor and twenty-one, like he's just an infectious character. He's he's brilliant in a group. He's obviously an extremely talented footballer. He works really hard at his game and has done that now for fifteen years. Um, and when we talk about, you know, look, you could name off, you could ream off 10 core fame footballers. When you're looking at the real, you know, high profile guys of the last 10 years in club football, you're looking at Fitzy, Gary Sice, um, you know, Joe Bergen from Mount Bellew, uh, Jamie Murphy has to be right up there. You know, at 38, uh, he has been absolutely exceptional from Tube Stars. And, you know, they were under pressure a couple of years ago. Um, but they've turned it around and he has been the central cog to that and he just offers them so much and like just a huge credit to him. He's he has been exceptional for them over the last five, six, seven years, um, on top of what was a, f- a brilliant first ten years for them. Yeah, I think he scored eight out of sixteen points against Middle yeah. and half their scores, it's something as well. Do you put Tune behind Sawtell, Jonathan, or 
Uh, it really is another like if you're you're probably looking at now you're you're down to the the, the second tier the ones just about that can still you know on their day beat anyone but are probably still just a tiny bit behind. I would probably just about edge Tum as four. I just think as Barry said on there, they're such an experienced club, you know, rigid outfit. They've been there, done that, a lot of scoring power as well. Murphy's shooting the lights out. McCalter is playing well. They're getting scores from uh, Gary O'Donnell. Got a wonderful score from out the right wing. Uh, Reedy at wing back as well. Is a, is a, is a, it's a, got a couple of nice scores. They are. I know they had a bit of a wobble maybe the last day out uh, for a little bit of a phase in the second half against Unspiddle. But look, that's understandable enough given the, the surreal heat that the game was being played in. But I would, I just think they're just a, such a, a seasoned, rugged outfit. They are going to be very, very hard to beat. And Reedy has just brought a little bit of an edge to them. So I'd probably just about have them in four with we'll Salt Hill just behind in five in is the way I'd be thinking. But uh, you'll have a better idea of Salt Hill after this Montpellier game where they really are at. I think the Barna game, they were probably an element, not quite luck, but probably a fortune. They definitely didn't deserve to be nine-point victories for me that day out. I think Barna proved that then by their follow-up game last Friday night against St. James's. But uh, Anna Down as well, they were kind of a, a beaten docket. I think that, uh, they, you know, they, they had uh, burned up a lot of energy the first day out. Um, when they didn't get over the line, I thought their heads were down a little bit. And uh, aside from Comer, maybe they were, you know, both both games were probably similar in the fact that they didn't really probably have a lot of other lads pushing the wheel alongside them. It felt like a bit of a one-man band at times. And they were able to win that game at a canter then against Salt Hill. Where, so I'd, I'd probably just edge... Tune four and Salt Hill five. Does the next team up then, Barry? Does well, when you're looking at the championship so far in an overall context, like are you thinking they're Milton because they're, I suppose, the other team in the championship that are unbeaten? No, not at all. To be honest, yeah. <laughs> joking. Just because Donaldson, the Donaldson, the Milton man. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, again, typical Milton. They've found a couple of, you know, Jack Curran, I think, has been really exceptional for them this year and has been over the last couple of years. And he's a real, really, really good footballer. Mike Martin's shown good form. You know, they're a team that, that probably the average age is above where where they would like it to be, but they all put their shoulder to the wheel um, for that jersey. It means it means a huge amount to them. And they'll be delighted. Um, they'll be delighted to, to, have, to be unbeaten. <clears throat> have they faced any of the top teams yet? No. Um, but the fact that they are unbeaten, you would probably have to put them. You have probably have to put them in the top of the next tier. Um, so I would say, you know, difficult difficult to start ranking from here down and exactly where anyone is. But I think if if, if you were to try and start from the, for, put Milltown next because they're they're unbeaten, then you're probably looking at all the teams that have won one, one game. Yeah. in a group and then you're looking at the teams that have won zero games with the exception maybe of Anna Down and the fact that they have played um, Montpellier Myla and Salt Hill in their first two games so they probably faced two of the three strongest teams in their group first so um, yeah Milltown unbeaten they will go next and and after that you know you will be looking at all the teams who've, who have a, who have one win in, in a group after that I'd say Who's up next, Shandon? Oh, well, it, it's you're probably you yeah. Look, you, if you if you're going logically, you say that Milton were on that that line. I thought Milton were quite fortunate to get over the line against Michaels. I think I go as far as saying it's a point I think I've made before and probably will make a bit. Teams in Group Three are a little bit fortunate that the uh, how do I put it the uh, the load is spread a lot a lot a lot thinner around the place I think it's you're bunching a lot more teams that are probably around the average qualities together you don't really have a powerhouse in it there's no real one out of that group that you think yeah they're going to contend or they're going to win they win it outright so I think they were a bit fortunate I thought they were incredibly lucky to get in a half time level barring a couple of a freak minute before yeah. half time uh, and like I think it's the age old thing again and Without putting the boot in, I think there's so many of these teams and Michaels are very much at a, a nearly development stage in terms of the overall group, whereas Milton are the opposite end of the spectrum. They have experienced dogs out there that will do anything and just about they know what it's like to win in championship and get over the line. 
And I think they've proved that in both ga- in both games. Kalalan game was a going against them. I know aided by some Kalalan injuries. And the same way this Michael games, like everything that could be going wrong was going wrong. They were better out of gate in midfield, missing some crazy wides. Um, like even the likes of Mike Marin that ended up with two three, like he'll be very disappointed with his performance. He'd some like he could have shot the lights out on another day, but some it's just the radar wasn't there at all. Like and and then like that's the type of player that he is. He's ha- having a bad day, but he's able to rifle in a couple of goals, like the Milton's third goal. The, I the needle stuff into the top corner in the second half. So they're just that bit of streetwise. And if you want to sum up the point, it's probably bringing on Jeremy Bake at the end and he catches two monster catches when it felt like the Michaels were just kind of coming back into the game. Um, but they just have that bit of streetwise. Next, after that, oh, like, as you said, you're touching on teams that have won one game. Um, I think Barn, Barna's performance against St. James's would have to... Would yeah. have to put them, and as you said, they were, they were, they, they had some really good patches. They had some really good patches against South Hill. So, and the fact that that they have been consistent over the last couple of years, I think they'll find a bit of form and take huge confidence from the team from the win over St James's. So, I I would say they would probably have to win next. Yeah, and you add into that Barry as well the form that I've been um highly impressed so far with Ushin Gormley a uh, corner forward. He is turning into a tidy little corner forward there. He was very, very good the first day out against Salt Hill. Uh, and I didn't see the game against James's, but uh, all reports are that he had another fine game again. I think he, he racked up a good tally as well. So to have a player in in the, in such good form uh, as well, and like that, like they're they're looking at their say that if Montbelli were to be, were to beat Salt Hill, they're probably targeting the second spot there in, in the group on two points at the moment. Um, Next year, like uh, I, I, you, you are right, Barry. There, like next, you're probably looking at, at your your native side, Barry. Like I, th- I was very impressed with the manner of the victory over Carlos Strand. Um, a lot of pressure going into that one. I'm sure there was a lot of rumblings at home as well, Barry, after the first day out and the old age, old things of what's going wrong. Why can't we get all this talent onto senior level, etc., etc., etc. I know that he, you know, some key key players missing the first day out, but. Maybe again, you'd be more in the loop, Barry. But it felt like from the outside looking in that they took a little bit of a, a you know, a plan B move and, and put Connor Fly in full forward, and he just rang a muck there in Tume Stadium in the heat on, on Saturday evening. Like he was very, very impressive. We're all used to him being, being the one mind in the house. He was, he was, he was in the opposite end of the spectrum there on Saturday night, uh, and they had they had a fine, you know, some fine performance. Connor Campbell was was excellent as well. Jack Lynn came back, played well. You know, they looked like a team that. Knew that that they needed to perform, and my God, did they perform as well? Yeah, hundred percent. Um, hugely disappointed after the St Michael's game, but to put it into perspective, they were missing some some of their really key players. Um, Connor's an excellent, like you know, he plays outfield for Carmore Hurlers as well. Like he's he's not he you know wasn't going to be overly strange for him. I I heard that that's where they were going to play him um, this year, so. You know he'll, he, you know he'll be a real threat for them. He's a big fella, good hands, great boot, and and he showed that the last day. Jack Lane again, Connor Campbell. So yeah, their big players played well, and they got a real performance and they got a good result. For Connor himself, you know I, I actually have been impressed with some of the keepers. Um, you know, even looking at I think Cormac Haslam was excellent for Glenamady. I think Rory Lavelle has been good for Sartell. Um, um. The uh, Barney goalie Kane, he has yeah, been, yeah, been yeah. really, re- yeah, he's been really, really good for them. Um, so is it going to do Conor Flaherty any favors that he's not going for Claire Galway? Who knows? You know, Pari, I'm sure maybe he's rented by Pari to say, Look, is there, is there an issue here? And hopefully he will say no. Um, <laughs> and as I throw in on top of that, obviously Conor Gleason. So there's a good, there's a good spread of keepers there. And the fact that Conor has to play off field maybe, maybe isn't great for himself, but no, look, he, he was excellent. Um, a real target of full forward. He caused Carl Strand all sorts of problems. Um, Claire Galway will still need to improve. To have a, a say in the in, in the championship, but you know it was a game that was pressure on, and yeah, you could probably throw them throw them in next because you, you know that that was an impressive performance after what was a, a terrible one against St Michael's. As well, Barry, just with Connor Flat, like he was he's really impressive. But I suppose with himself and Nathan Granger inside now as a partnership, it's, it's something that you can really see developing. 
Yeah, huge. But like Nathan Granger, seems it seems like he's around a long time, but he's only yeah. a young fella. Um, and he's a and he's a huge finisher, and he's one of these natural corner forwards that, you know, it's a it's a very specific position in that you know your movement has to be so sharp, and he's a good, you know, he's a big big soccer background, so his movement is constantly good. It's it's short and it's sharp and it causes defenders problems. So allied that to, to Connor's power and strength, then you have a good mix. And as I said, if Danny if Danny can come back and and um find some fitness, then then they should have they should have forwards up top. Jason Riley, a wing forward, he's huge pace. He will cause teams problems if they you know if they if they step off him, he'll he'll go by them because he is serious gas. So yeah, they've 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 plenty of options. Um, it's trying to get the balance right. Um, get the style of play right and obviously keeping things tight at the back as well. So we're supposed to be moving on now to the bottom half and um, Jonathan... Uh, You're in the doldrums here, aren't you? Yeah. Ray? You're looking at the, the remaining teams that have a that have a win. So James is from group two and then from the more more even uh, group three, M- Michaels and Kalalan. I'd probably edge towards Kalalan maybe next in line, not uh, Johnny Keeney seems to have a very good game for them against one of a last last week out. I think they're you know they team that's been around the block a while and a bit of experience, a bit of raw dogging to them. So I'd probably put them next in line. Barry, who are you thinking then for number ten? Oh yeah, yeah, Patsy Clan and maybe <clears throat> I might take the easy option, go out of the teams that have one win. Who might be the weakest? I, I would say, like Saint, Ma- like Claire Gawler were very poor against Saint Michael's. Like they hit one five, Saint Michael's hit one eight. They didn't really look like scoring any more than that. Um, so I don't think it was an impressive performance from Saint Michael's either. And I don't think they were great against great against Milltown. So out of the teams that have one win, I would possibly see them at being at the, the bottom of that group, and 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 Kalanen being at the top of it. Um, and I'd even possibly see, I don't know, Uttarard have no winch, they don't, I'd, I'd see maybe Dame and Anna Down, Leapfrog and St. Michael's in terms of potential for to pick up more points, um, you know, in the games to come. Michael's for me is just... Sorry, Jonathan, it's just going to hate you. Sorry, uh, with St. Michael's, it's just the, the scoring or the lack of scoring, really, that would concern me a bit. I think they were, both games, they had periods of dominance, but they just... And particularly against Milltown, they didn't really kind of convert their uh, all the possession that they had and their dominance in the game into, into tangible scores. I think one of the 20, 24 points scored for. Um, it just feels like that if there is a weakness, that's where where it is at the, at the moment, just getting over the line. So I, uh, you'd probably just lean towards maybe St. James is just about ahead of them and the fact that they have a player like Paul Conroy that can just you know, on his day, just shoot the lights out and, and, and get them scores in a game that may be going against them. Concanon as well is another bit of a sharp shooter inside. So I'd probably just have James as just slightly ahead of uh, Michaels then. So just for number 10, are we going here with Anna Down or Uther Head? Or are James is trying to mix now? I think we go with Kalanen, I think is the... Kalanen yeah. number nine, yeah. Then oh, Kalanen, Kalanen nine, then... Uh, See, Oakterard, it's it's so unknown. They've been, they've probably will they play a bit more expansive now and next day out against Toom? Maybe, maybe not. The you'd probably lean to that. They're probably probably much of the same play with the handbrake. But they've had you know having starting off your campaign against um Mount or who's sorry, bigger pardon, Corrafin, and then My uh, against um Mike Cullen. That's it's impossible to read their form. We've no idea where they're actually at. Um, they probably themselves didn't even expect to get anything out of those games. They're probably targeting now the last three rounds and see where they go. It's just very hard to to say where they're at. They're probably maybe. Well, they had a good yeah, I, I I I I would I would go with them ahead of. I, I think they're probably the best of the rest at the, at this stage. Yeah, Sean, is it? Or no, Gerard. I think Kalan and go Kalan and Luke Gerard. Um, and then you're looking at, like you're really looking at St. James's, Anna Down, Carlos Strand. And I think Anna Down, 
just in the fact that, that, that they've played to read. Like, I'm giving Luke Rard and Anna Down to a certain extent a free pass in that they've played. You know, they're they're one of the few teams, or they're both the few, the two teams that in their first two games have faced the hardest opposition in their group. So I think they that has to buy them some credit. And, and I think we'll, we'll, we'll fire them in ahead of, um, uh, you know, ahead of Carlos Strand, one of the, those, those, those type of teams. Unless Jonathan has a, a casting vote there. No, I, 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 I he's, going to gazump, he's going to gazump me on something here. Well, I wholeheartedly endorse that comment. Um, because Claire Galway then bought him. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd like to distance myself from this. <laughs> so that puts Anna down down at 11. Jonathan, are you thinking then Carlos Strand at 12, or do you still think with James is, you still feel there's a bit of quality there? I'd have James as ahead of them. James is ahead of Cash. Yeah, I will do. Yeah. Do I, I just I wouldn't I wouldn't um venture down as far as Quayle's for a few points any 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 time soon. <laughs> uh, they're, they're not ones to hold grudges down there. Don't worry. <laughs> well, that's it. Would you have then Cash Ryan then in thirteenth? Very. I suppose. I think they're in the top four. I know. I'm only messing. Um. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I. I think. I think James have have. Like look, Carl Strand are producing some some nice young footballers mm-hmm. too. Jonathan McGrath and the likes. Um. But probably again, just lacking. Look, lacking that that ability to get scores when they really need it. I think that's maybe where Saint James's might have a trump card. A trump card on that, and that Paul Conroy can, can pick up points. They'll have been very, very if that doesn't happen. What happened last weekend doesn't happen in St. James's very often. Like they're they're dogged and they you know they 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 fight for that jersey and they have some really, really good footballers and a good game plan. So yeah, I think I think they deserve they deserve to be given a a, a bit of a break from from that performance last weekend. And I think they'd they'd slip in just to, just ahead of Carlos John. Barry as well with Calderon, I suppose, the way we have Keen Darcy and the two Glins as well against Carlo over the weekend. Very big blows for them. Yeah, huge and keen. Keen, um, like, I suppose, he's probably the forgotten man of Galway football to a certain extent. You know, he was a, a huge option for Porrick in, in his first couple of years in charge and just seems to have gone off the boil a little bit. But I thought he was, I thought he was really good there on their, their first day. Um, ponytail and all, and um, he he's like he's a huge beast of a fella around the middle of the pitch and 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 lawless as well. So yeah, they're 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 good around the middle of the pitch, and without him, he is a huge loss to them. So was he enough of a loss to, to stem the tide of of Clergaw, I think I don't I don't think so. Um, but yeah, he is obviously a big big loss for them. John, we talked about Michael's earlier on. I presume this is where they fit in now next. Yeah, you'd probably stick them in there. Uh, we're running out of options here. Right? It, it, like the whole caveat of the whole, when we're down this deep against teams that haven't won and you haven't probably uh, haven't shown us their best form or, or what their full potential yet, it is very much a mixed bag. You could have this conversation maybe 10 times and go to 10 different ways, but you probably would lean towards Michael's leg. That's a bad, bad defeat against Milton for them in a game that, they really should have been winning. Um, that was there for them for taking. Uh, it's kind of, there's a little bit of the, uh, I suppose, the whole club grown and um, just getting this hard yard experience of on the job where Milton had in abundance. Uh, I just, just to get over the line, like it, it really was a game, but I'd just be a bit concerned about just have they enough scores in them? Um, like Gary Egan seems to be scoring the majority of their scores. Yeah, is there is there enough of a spread there? Like they they still like the, this group is is so, is so wide open, but like they realistically probably need to be beating Kalala <laughs> next day out. Um, I if they want to really get out of the group, particularly like if like Milton are probably looking at it if they if they can uh, get a victory over near neighbors Carlos Strand and what should be a lovely tame affair. Um, if they can get over the line, they're they're in a bloody good position. You know, three 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 wins out of out of three, uh, and you know, one of eight to come, who probably are, are seem to be just struggling a bit. And you'd have to imagine that Clare Galway with a bit of a bit of momentum, they'll push on from that victory over Carlos Strand, and and will follow that up after the break with a victory over Monave. That that's Monave in a dogfight still, and they're probably looking at other options. So. Yeah, in, in in summary, we'll throw Michaels in next. 
So we're down now to 15, 16, 17, 18. The four teams remaining there, Onsbidin, Mobe Abbey, Lechemore and Ankarua. Um, these would be all teams you're expecting to just avoid the drop. Who, who would you look here at 15 and uh, 9? Yeah, I think like uh, Mulvey Abbey have been unlucky in their in their two games. I think they have been, um, you know, they will have been relatively happy with their performance. Obviously, you want to win, you want to get results, but the, the first and foremost, you want is the performance. And their performance actually wasn't that bad in in both of their games. So I think out of the four, I'll rank them the highest. Um, I think Spiddle have been. Decimated by injury, I think Finn and Ali, he, he, he went off, or he didn't start last day, I think. I'm not sure he did not he start. Did, but it's Anton Ali, he's out. Anton the centre, isn't it? Yeah. But did, he, did, did, did Finian get injured? I didn't see a lot of him in the, in the second Yeah, no, Finian, Anton Ali is injured, but I think Finian Ali went off as well. Yeah, because um, I didn't, I was kind of in and out, we were doing the show at the time, so I couldn't watch the whole the game full on, but I definitely remarked that I didn't see a lot of him towards the end of the second yeah. half, so he must have been gone off. Yeah, so he went off as well. So I think they have been really unfortunate injuries. Um, so I think I, I would probably put them next. Um, I think Caro are just, you know, unfortunately just in a huge, a, a huge transitional period. Um, I think they'll be fine. I think they'll avoid the drop. But I think they, uh, they're, they're just struggling to find a bit of form at the moment. And unfortunately, again, for Letcher Moore, it's, it's just playing resources. They're just not there at the moment. Um uh, you know, and again, it's a transitional period for them. So, out, out of the last four, I would rank them uh, Monavay Abbey, on Spidiel, on Karua, and Nirvana Letamore. And didn't you disagree with there, Johnson? I could never disagree with Barry. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, joking aside, I think that probably is, uh, from what we've seen so far, um, that's probably the, the lay of the land that I would go with as well. Just as well, um... To close, lads, um, Barry, the minor All Stars were announced today. Go, I got uh, six All Stars Kyle Gilmore, the keeper, uh, Thomas Berting, and uh, we got Player of the Year, Killian Trayers, Jack Lonergan, Ana Monaghan, and uh, Colin Costco. It's, it's, it's a great end to a fantastic year for the minors. Yeah, three turn up more, lads. It's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought, I thought, um, you know, from a championship that started, um, you know, probably disappointingly for a lot of them. But, um, you know, as I said before, like Mullinoy just took his shit and they really, they, they, you know, Alan Glean just gave them gave them time to find themselves. And that Mayo kind of final, they seemed to just, uh, you know, it seemed to kind of be the making of the team. And, and just like, like I, I know they didn't win it, but they kind of found... I think they found a way of, of, of playing that suited them and they then went on and beat the three provincial finalists in the quarter, three provincial winners in the quarter final, semi final, final. So there can, no, can be no complaints that they were the best team and deservedly got got their rewards in terms of the individual accolades. And um, the cornerback's name escapes me. You'll have to remind oh, me. Yeah, from, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Like, what a player. You know, so unusual to see a cornerback. I think he got man of the match in the semi final and final. Um, exceptional footballer, and and has a huge, a hugely bright future ahead of him. The big challenge for Galway GA is to make sure that these lads don't don't slip through the net because it's a big step up at that age. When when minor is under seventeen, it's a it's a big step up to go and kind of compete with under nineteen. Like they're, you know, they're, they're, I know that sounds a bit bit funny compared to you know when it was under 18 turned to 21 like you've, you've matured a huge amount more physically by the time you get to 18 rather than 17 so there's a big big challenge there for Galway GA it's good people there looking after them and um, to try and progress them on to under 19 and then obviously um, you know the big goal is that that as many as, as many as possible will go on and represent Galway at senior level yeah, I'm sure you would have seen a lot of them as well throughout the year yeah, it's just to echo what Barry said, the growth of them was just remarkable. And I I wasn't anyway optimistic earlier on in the year. I, I hold my hands up, particularly. I know Barry said there, touched on maybe finding a way in the kind of final. I left, I left Castle Bar that evening. It was a Monday night. Pretty distraught. I didn't see a way forward for, for them, but the, 
the journey that they went on then was just absolutely remarkable and credit to all the players and the management. They really, really just grew as the journey went on. And um, great to see the, all the lads down right down the spine of the team there as well represented in the in the team of the year. Um, and there is a couple of fine gems there that you will hope that will be, uh, hopefully in the next couple of years, we watch them. I, I go back to that victory over Derry in Parnell Park um, in uh, the quarterfinal, I think it was, was it? Um, and Costello in particular was, was outstanding uh, there in corner forward and they were a right good team throughout. So yeah, no, great. Great to see that that their year um, rightfully ending in a high and we'll get some acknowledgement on, on the biggest stage of all and hopefully we'll see them in loads more maroon jerseys in the years to come. Uh, that's all we do have uh, time for on the show, Stephen. Um, I'm sure there will be a backlash to some of these power rankings, so it'll be interesting to see people's reaction. But uh, lads, uh, thanks a million for your time.